Sanctuary, Heavenly Birthstones, Part 33, compiled by Shirley Jean Street and read by Wayne T. Street. For 22 years, Joseph's brothers hid their guilty secret within their troubled hearts. They watched their father's sadness embitter his soul and cloud the lives of all in the encampment. They noted their own children growing up into manhood with deepening traits of evil. But they were unable to discipline them as they should because of their own self-condemnation. But during these 22 years, they also learned many valuable lessons. Slowly, the leaven of grace was molding their lives. At the close of this period, Joseph was 39 and had become prime minister of Egypt. Reuben was 45. The other brothers ranged between 40 and 44 years of age. By this time, they had actually developed strong characters, which the trials to which Joseph submitted them in Egypt revealed to be good. At their encounter with their brother in the land of the pharaohs, the past was forgiven, and a new chapter in the lives of the patriarchs opened. Jacob and his entire household moved to Egypt. For the next 17 years, the large and united family of Jacob lived in Goshen. This was probably the happiest period of their lives. Jacob had his sons and their families around him. The bitterness of their early years was forgotten. His favorite son, Joseph, was the most honored person in Egypt. All was well. Joseph named his firstborn son Manasseh, which means forgetting, Genesis 41, verse 51. His sign was engraved in the blue-laced agate. He represents the quiet and the meek. In spite of all his self-made problems, he finally established himself through the miracle of God's grace as part of God's covenant society. Like his great-uncle Esau, Manasseh, although the firstborn, received second place in the birthright blessing. But the circumstances were entirely different. Manasseh did nothing to forfeit his privileges in this blessing. Yet, his younger brother Ephraim was exalted by grandfather Jacob to a position of great honor and power. Genesis 48, verse 14. There is little recorded about the tribe of Manasseh, after they settled in Canaan. It is gratifying to note that even though the verses which do refer to this tribe are faint and scattered, they indicate that many of them desired to serve the Lord. 1 Chronicles 12, verses 20 and 21, and also verse 31. 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verses 1 to 13. If Reuben had never lost his birthright through sin, or if Dan had not formed a character so like Satan that his name was omitted from the list of the twelve tribes, Manasseh's name might never have shown over one of the twelve pearly gates. In this experience are lessons for every child of God. Like Ephraim, Manasseh had all the advantages and disadvantages of wealth and privileges but he chose an altogether different road in life. Manasseh's name is on a gate to the golden city, Revelation 7, verse 6. From there, he invites everyone who has inherited his personality traits and who face the battles he fought and won. His ensign displayed a wild buffalo or unicorn, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 17. The blue of heaven symbolizing trusting acceptance and joyful compliance to God's will, shone through the agate and into the soul of this man, Manasseh, whose life was changed and guided by the love and power of Jesus. His counterpart in the city is James Thunderhead, the first martyr among the apostles by the sword of Herod.